Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And Shelby. And today, we're going to be talking about why your shrimp are not breeding. And we've got several different possibilities on why it's possible your shrimp are not breeding. And hopefully one of these ones on my list tonight will help you out. If not, and you've got a maybe a specific question or an issue that you want to bring forward tonight, um, you can uh, ask that in the chat. And uh, we'll be glad to help you out. But for the most part, if your shrimp are not breeding, a lot of that has to do with age. Uh, depending on when you get your shrimp uh, and where you get them, they could be anywhere from one centimeter to three centimeters, possibly smaller. But generally speaking, most sellers uh, that are homebred will sell their shrimp around one centimeter in size. And then most of the importers, uh, mainly Neocaridina, uh, will come in at three centimeters full grown. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they just have the most color and a lot of the pet stores and uh, consumers of the product, they want the best of the best right away. And it's not always the, I don't know, that's not always correct when talking about shrimp because sometimes having them uh, at full age, they could possibly be past their prime and on the way out and no longer able to breed because you don't quite know how old that shrimp is. Um, and then also that shrimp could be severely stressed out. It goes through a uh, lot of stress when it gets shipped. And most of the stress is placed on the rep reproduction organs and they uh, might not breed nearly as well as, say, a one centimeter shrimp. And a lot of the home breeders, home breeders, home breeders will sell them at one centimeter mainly because uh, they're still like made out of rubber and magic, just like kids. They can kind of bounce off the walls, hit the floor, and bounce right back up like nothing ever happened. Well, I'm learning at 30 years old, you, you can't do that anymore. So. <laughs> The one centimeter shrimps are not 30 year olds. The three centimeters, they, they're over 30. So over the hill. And then at one centimeter, it is possible for the males to breed. Um, very unlikely. Most males will breed starting right around two centimeters uh, or in between one and two. And then the same exact thing with females is they'll start breeding at around two centimeters um, but you know, it, it's not uncommon for them not to start breeding until three centimeters. Also really not on the list, but I thought I'd add it in. Uh, it's been a kind of, kind of a common discussion lately, uh, with first time moms. Uh, it is possible for them to drop their eggs. Uh, they're new at this. They haven't really gotten around to carrying or 30 eggs or so. They might start dropping one at a time. You got to think like if you just went and grabbed three balls and you've never juggled before, how hard was that your first time even? You know what I'm saying? So they're doing like 30. They're trying to fluff the muffins and keep all the eggs from fungusing up. And also they're trying to keep their armor on their shell, their their molt. And if, you know, one of those things goes that that's the eggs, the babies, you can take those eggs and save the eggs and put them in a little uh, egg tumbler or like in a net on top of the sponge filter and you can artificially hatch your eggs but um yeah hopefully that doesn't happen but if it does don't don't be too upset about it um then the next major thing that um we have in the hobby and it's really not like a hobby of breeding shrimp a lot of people call it like keeping water. You, you, a lot of times you're just keeping the right water, making it pristine, the, the right pH, GH, TDS, and stuff like that. As long as you can master that, you could really master a wide spectrum of different fish and, and invertebrates. So the main thing and reason why shrimp aren't breeding is going to be pH for caridina. If you have the pH a little bit too high, they're not going to really bury up. Uh, they know that simply the babies are not going to be able to molt. And it's just kind of a waste of nutrition and nutrients and stuff like that. And then next is going to be uh, the, the 
the solids in the water. So the minerals, uh, caridina, it, it's GH and general hardness. Um, with neocaridina and a lot of other species, the KH plays an important part. If you don't have enough KH in your water, you'll have pH swings. So in the morning, you might wake up and you've got a really, really low pH because overnight without the lights, the pH is going to drop. And then throughout the day, your pH slowly climbs and you can end up with like an 8 pH or something like that. And then again, overnight, it's going to drop. And the shrimp really do not like the pH swings too much. The adults might be able to survive and live in it. However, the babies are just going to uh, get eaten up with the pH swings and don't stand a chance to mold. I got to go this. Welcome in, everybody. Give Grant a minute. Matt, flour, so it's not alcohol. No, nope, flowers work a little bit better. Uh, welcome in, everybody. And I saw a question. Mario asked, do you breed Caradina outdoors as well? Currently, we do not. Um, we do plan on setting maybe one of the ponds up for Caradina. has been talked about us several times. Uh, there's two tigers um, and one already. You already put them out there? Yeah, I, I finally did it. Are they breeding now? No, yeah, because I did it right before the winter. So, so I wanted to see if they could survive the winter first. If they can do that, then... I, I think they should be able to survive the summer. Uh, where I have them is like complete shade. They might get two or three hours of direct sunlight a day, and it's early morning. So uh, I think the water temperature stays pretty in the low, low uh, 80s on that tank. And as long as the shrimp don't have any bacterial infections or anything like that, uh, I think they'll be able to hack it. All right. Then, if you don't have the right KH in your water, your pH will swing and stuff like that. However, if you have some limestone or crushed coral in the tank, you don't necessarily need that KH. So there are ways around different parameters in breeding shrimp. Uh, there's several different methods and stuff like that. I like to go with the easiest. And for me, my tap water has a bunch of KH in it. So I just fill up all the tanks with inert substrate and tap water, add a little bit of dechlorinator, and the shrimp are good to go, and the pH levels stay real stable for our neocaridina. Uh, caridina, we do uh, the GH only minerals, so there's no KH in the water, and what's buffering the pH is the aqua soils. Uh, you could use peat moss, um, but I don't know anyone out there. Um, maybe that's a challenge for somebody. Maybe do a peat moss tank and see what happens but uh share your info info and let us know what happened for sure and send pictures i'm really curious about it i've just never done it maybe you should do the peat moss and i'll do the pistachio shells in a mm -hmm. side by side tank and we'll do like tigers or yellow king kongs or something all right then you got your nits your nitrates your nitrites <laughs> Uh, and your ammonia. Dr. Anthony is here. Stop making him mad. <laughs> oh, look, we lost him. I'm just kidding. But anyways. Um, we've got... That blend said thought it was Dean Knight. Oh, uh, we... Dean Knight was last night on Lucas's channel. I'm sorry. We dropped Dean off at the airport today uh, at like 4 o'clock. Uh, we had breakfast, went and saw... Uh, consolidated fish farms. Shelby and myself have never been there. Um, and so we took Dean, lots of angelfish, but, um, you know, I, I was expecting a lot of angelfish, but he had a lot of other stuff too. So it was, it was a really nice uh, second generation fish farm fish store. It was really cool. Um, but back to the ammonia and the nits, uh, those can burn the gills and cause the shrimp to not be able to uh, get proper oxygen. And without that proper oxygen, uh, the shrimp aren't going to bury up and be able to breed and do what you want them to do. Um, oxygen is really important. If you just have a tank and it's stagnant, you don't have any plants in there or anything like that, your oxygen levels are, are going to deplete. I mentioned we were with Dean 
uh, at LRB's last night, and Dean was going on about how it's the quietest fish room he's ever been to because Lucas has absolutely no filters, no bubbles, or anything going on like that. But what he does have is a ton of um, plants growing in his tank, dumping oxygen into the tank so that way uh, the shrimp have everything that they need. He uh, makes sure the water is all set up and filtration. And, you know, even though they're not doing water changes, that man sells enough shrimp that he's taking out water and adding in fresh water every now and then. So that's all his tanks really need. Um, but the more oxygen that you do put in the tanks, the more water volume, etc., the more babies you will get. Yeah, you will get. I've been stumbling a lot. It's been lack of sleep. We uh, had a guest over the other night when after Dean's talk, so that way we could go collecting. And uh, me and Mark were up until like two o'clock in the morning catching koi fish, moving things around. Uh, we're going to start selective breeding the koi fish. And right afterwards, I found a bunch of babies up at the top pond already. So those aren't selective bred, but I probably won't get rid of them because I already told them breeding the koi fish and stuff like that. That's that's more like my hobby hobby. And then he can do the selective breeding and worry about that. I'm, I'm not going to fret. Hey, Frank said, how long can you expect shrimp to start breeding after you receive them at one centimeter? So... Generally speaking, two to three months. Uh, this is going to depend on your temperature and size of the tank. Um, if you wanted to crank them out in like a tub outside or a large 55 gallon, jack the temperatures up to like 83, 84 degrees and feed them heavily. Do water changes every week, 30 to 40 percent. You could get them going again uh, in about a month. But generally speaking is like three months before I start to get worried and start going through the checklist and figuring out what's going on. Why are these shrimp not breeding? But like I said, age and size is generally what, uh, what to expect at one centimeter. The shrimp are usually about once one month old, uh, sometimes two. Um, so like three, four months, you know, they do go through a little bit of stress when they get shipped. Uh, it doesn't matter where you get them from. You take them out of one environment and put them into a different one, it is going to slow down their growth slightly. Unless you take them out of a bad environment and you throw them into a good environment, that could definitely boost them up. But uh, we, we definitely do proper care and uh, water changes in the tanks. The shrimp get just about everything they need and, and then some. All right. Oh, I thought you were going to click on another one. <clears throat> but... Oxygen is definitely important with baby survival rate uh, and overall health of the shrimp and tank. Uh, if you don't like algae, crank up the oxygen, crank up the amount of water changes you're doing. Um, and a lot of times putting the air stone isn't what adds oxygen into the water. I, it, it's got to do something, though, because the bubbles have surface area around them. So as the bubble goes up, that's adding surface area and oxygen into the water as the bubble rises but once it hits the surface the surface is also being agitated and that's what creates most of the oxygenation to enter the water at that point i just want to get this one done real quick because uh it looks like scuba steve is hiding in the bathroom at work so hopefully he's still there so i can get the answer to the question he <laughs> said uh can i strip a shrimp like i do african cichlids I don't think you could do it safely. I think you'd like murder the female. I don't, I don't know how she would let go. Um, even when you like take the shrimp from a, take the eggs from a molt that's been uh, kicked off from a freshly brand new female or a dead shrimp that might have passed on uh, due to stress or something like that, the eggs are extremely hard to remove. So, yeah, it's not as easy as the African mouth brooders. For those that don't know what stripping African cichlids, it means just taking the little babies out of the mouth of the, uh, the cichlid themselves. The females will hold the babies for a while and feed them and protect them. 
again. All right. I, I just want to interrupt you just for a second. Rico Stan uh, just said, hello, gorgeous, sexy beast, and hi to you, too, Shelby. So you got a compliment. <clears throat> but let's equal that out. The with, beard must be growing with, on uh, Rico. <laughs> with Chris coming in. And um, the big said, hello, beautiful lady, and the Hawaiian hobo. <laughs> got a good balance here tonight. I got to grow the mustache back and then, then I'll hack it all off. Okay, continue. I haven't got to a new. All right. <laughs> but if I didn't mention water changes already, this is the time. I've had people come to me where, A, what do I got to do to get these shrimp breeding? Uh, I've had them for so long, da 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 da. Um, and then all the parameters are right, everything matches up. There's there's no ammonia in the water or anything like that. They've got tons of plants. There's oxygen, the right filtration, everything like that. And then I just ask them, what's your water change routine? Oh, well, I don't do water changes because they've watched one of Lucas Brett's videos or there's like that other Google search and stuff like that where, oh, they, they don't do water changes or they don't like water changed water and stuff like that or they need aged water and stuff. Well it's not exactly true uh lucas does a great job at you know taking care of his shrimp and stuff like that but like i mentioned <clears throat> he is selling shrimp and taking water out of that tank and replacing it so it's not like he's doing water changes but there is some water replacement therapy going on there where the other thing with aged water or you want to use something like that that's just to take the chlorine out of the water so that way it's safe for the shrimp you can just simply add prime and then you don't need to wait at all before doing your water changes a lot of times we'll add prime straight to the tank and then fill up there's a cuban tree frog eating moths on our window ah oh, i don't like the moths but i don't like the frog either it's a lose-lose <laughs> situation all right um I spaced the water changes. Yeah, the the chlorine is not going to be an issue if you just add the prime to the tank and then fill up the tank. Uh, the shrimp won't mind. Generally speaking, when when adding the prime, your t total dissolved solids will be raised by ten uh, for the proper dose of the tank. Um, but water changes do a lot if you are trying to get the most out of breeding get the most babies the biggest largest survival rate possible water changes are going to help a lot also get them shrimp growing and moss growing a lot faster you're trying me tonight with this gar gar garcia aquatics here the five dollar super chat thanks garcia aquatics welcome in how's it going man I'm doing all right this week. I seen you were at like a safari or something with Joseph, so you got to be having some fun over there. And were you at the auction yesterday or the day before? I think it was for the Gold Coast. They had a, a nice little auction, a good Killies selection. You would have been, you would have been happy to go. Thank you, Garcia. But of course, we were at Dean's talk. Oh, no, we were collecting on Sunday and then went to Lucas Brett's house. So the four hour drive from my house to that club meeting for the auction is a little bit too far of a stretch. Not knowing exactly what's going to show up. Um, I see Dr. Anthony in the house. Uh, you guys want to go and check out the Ornamental Fish Research Center. If somebody could please drop his link down there. Uh, he is selling these raffle tickets. They are $50 each. The raffle tickets enter you in a little contest, and if you win, you will get $2,000 towards airfare for a trip to Peru to see the Ornamental Research Center with Dr. Anthony. Uh, so basically, for $50, you have a chance at an epic trip, an experience of a lifetime. Um, I know I was talking with Dean and what Dean says he does is he's going to wait till the end of the month and buy a few tickets. That's Dean's strategy to try and get that little. I think he's going to buy a few, so it's like a cheaper expedition to Peru. But 
Uh, Dean's been four times. The Bodrocks have been two or three times. Every single person that comes to the house, all they do is talk about Peru, unless they're from can Canada. And then I don't, I don't know what the deal was with that guy, but uh, everybody's talking about Peru. So I think next year we might have to schedule a trip, regardless of whether or not we win that raffle ticket or not. But oh, you'll, been begging for you'll like be competing against me in the raffles. And if you went to the Keystone Clash, you know I got I got luck in raffles. If you've been to anything else, though, I never win. <laughs> it's just the Keystone Clash. Oh, we do win. We win at clubs, but it's for angelfish. <laughs> no, the kids win. I never yeah. win. Give the kids the tickets and then get a better chance. But banquets. So it. I would like you to help this person. I have six cherry shrimp and they're not breeding. Having a hard time telling if any of them are males. All right. After water changes is male to female ratio as well as colony size. So generally speaking, I don't know how big your tank is, but we highly recommend at least one to two shrimp per gallon but no less than 10. so even if you have a five gallon tank do the maximum two shrimp it's not a max either it's the least the more shrimp that you get the easier it is to breed no matter what you get generally speaking that's how it is but a lot of like quarries and other things they just do better in colonies um shrimp generally speaking they're not like uh, colony spawners or anything like that. Uh, females are just ready when they're ready. But um, the males, they'll dance and they'll prance around when the females are ready. And what will happen is the males will just go crazy and try and figure out which one of the females is ready. Um, so if you don't have a lot of shrimp in the tank and you got like four males and only two females, and one shrimp is already pregnant and the other one's ready for it, chances are the one that is pregnant is going to get stressed out, drop the babies or absorb them or something like that. And then, you know, they're just going to keep doing that back and forth and you won't get any, um, any eggs or anything like that. If you are seeing eggs and then they're gone, I don't really freak out too much until like after two weeks. The eggs are kind of hard to see. Um, but generally speaking, I think if you have nine, nine uh, piece of a, any kind of uh, breeding colony, you have like a 97% chance of having a breeding pair in there. Uh, so you definitely want to get more if you can. Yeah, this person, Easy Rider, said, uh, so I've had yellow neos buried for at least a month and a half, and I'm still waiting for babies. Is this normal? I've been waiting to do a water change because I'm afraid it'll make them molt. Okay. That, that's not, not an issue. So first time moms, they might drop their, their uh, eggs on a molt. But if you do the water change, it might not happen. It might. But even if you don't do the water change, it can still happen. So um, I don't worry about a water change forcing a molt at all because all of the experienced females will have no issue at all handling that it's just the first time mothers so if you had babies and it's been past two weeks and you're not doing water changes i would get on doing some water changes chances are uh one of your parameters or the oxygen levels or something like that isn't doing too well another big thing about doing the water changes is when you're lowering that water level, you're also killing a bunch of little tiny organisms and stuff like that. And then when it refills, all that stuff dies and it's like super food for biofilm. So by draining the tank 30% or so, you're gonna create a massive amount of food for the shrimp almost instantly because as you fill up the tank, you'll see not just shrimp, but snails climb up to the top of the uh, tank that was exposed because they're eating all those proteins and stuff like that that are breaking down into biofilm. So don't be afraid to do your water changes. Make sure the parameters match up from the water that you're making exactly to the tank. So uh, for our discus, our discus are 83 degrees 
uh, and I don't have a heater just for our water change pumps. So I'll boil or not even boil. I'll just, you know, simmer a little bit of water. Uh, RO water on a pot on the stove and then I'll pour it into the trash can and if it's a little bit too hot I just wait a little bit uh, for that temperature to drop and then drain the tank and then fill it up with the 83 degree water and the discus never even noticed that you know the water was different so uh, as long as you make the same water over and over again uh, check your uh, tap water to make sure that you know the total dissolved solids are generally the same within like 10 of, uh, of uh, ppms or so if you do a uh, test and it's over 30 or something like that uh, feel free to call up your uh, water provider and see if they did any cleaning or changed anything lately uh, and if that is the case maybe wait a couple days for the pipes to kind of clean up get a bunch of water run through them before doing your water changes. Uh, as long as you're staying on top of things, waiting two or three days isn't going to really be a big deal. All right. To interrupt you because we can't see it on here too. Uh, Garcia Aquatics used his four-month member chat to say, I saw you guys at Consolidated Fish Farms. What? And you Maybe didn't say hello? It might have been just like a post. Oh, uh, I got gotcha. you. Yes. We did. There was somebody that came to the store and bought fish, and my kids, Shelby said the kids yeah. helped them get the fish or something yeah. like that. So Handed I was like, them the bags. So They're I was like, so Garcia, was that you for just a split second? But yeah. um, Dan probably made the post. Uh, it was really cool getting to see that. Check it out with Dean uh, and kind of like Google over the eye. I got drool some over some of the fish with them new fish that are to die for they are um koi swordtails and they are gigantic they were not like some little babies i mean these things are full grown and i'm super excited about them and and they're gorgeous next thing to and they're, they're bred in house yes and welcome back to the team nathan he re-upped his Neo Caradina membership and get your little video. Thank you so Bye. much. We did ship. I remember signing them. We shipped out a bunch of the stickers last mm -hmm. week. So yeah. I think we're all caught up. No, no, we're not all caught I'm up. Two behind. All two right. of them will be going out. It's our son's birthday tomorrow. He's turning 11. So super excited. We're going to be busy tomorrow, but um, they will go out Wednesday morning. And so if anybody's worried or doesn't have one, email us at thegardenofeater at gmail.com. Let us know your YouTube member name and then your address and we'll ship out your, I'll grab the sticker. But also, what do you get, Shelby? I wasn't listening. You get a 10%. <laughs> 10% off the order with your members only code. That'll be at the bottom of your thank you know. It's going to be like right here on the side. Oh, Look at yeah. that. Fancy little sticker. That's what he was asking about in the email. So, yep, so we can get that to you guys. Just let us know if you got it or not. Uh, shout out Jeff Kane. Donated a bunch of memberships. So if you were one of the lucky people and received a free membership from Jeff Kane, feel free to reach out to us and get that sticker and 10% off code. Tax return season is here. Use that 10% discount and get 10% more shrimp. <laughs> Eric coming in hot with a $20 super chat says we love great and show me. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>、So、she just she stalls <laughs> like she's there. And I'm like, all right, I'll say something, and then、okay. she's like, boop, got him <laughs> every time. Got him. Hope you're doing well, Eric. <laughs> Have a great day. And then Dr. Anthony coming in with two dollar super chat saying, "No complaining. Not、Sorry. allowed." Not、Sorry. allowed. He said he paid for it. He does not want to hear <laughs> one complaint from you for the rest of this. So,、uh, Mark,、right. Mark was just as enthusiastic as always to head down and go see you. So、Excuse、I don't know、you. what Mark's working on. 
<laughs> but I uh, I do want to take advantage of Mark because he uh, speaks Spanish and going down to South America, that's a, a good thing to have someone on your team by your side that wants to go take adventure adventures. And I know Dr. Anthony can speak Spanish quite fluently, but uh, he's not going to want to com- compete with all my shenanigans that me and Mark are going to run off and do. Continue. All right. What's your next one? So the male-female ratio and the size of the colony is definitely going to matter. Um, and then food content is very important. Uh, I mentioned biofilm, draining the tanks and stuff like that. But you also want to make sure that there is a copious amount of surface area in the tank. Um, the Lucas Brett's way is making a bunch of little rock piles in the corners of the backs of the tanks. Uh, Those are great for two reasons. One is it gives like a little nursery sanctuary for uh, the mother shrimp to go lay their uh, babies because they don't lay the eggs, but hatch the eggs out of the babies and then basically place them uh, in that little rock pile. Uh, In that rock pile, there's going to be a copious amount of little tiny uh, critters and stuff like that for them to breed. Um, And then... Also, all of that surface area is going to grow biofilm on it, and that is going to be probably 60% of your uh, shrimp's diet. And then when you're feeding them, uh, you know, you're going to be supplementing that out. I know Lucas only uses the tetracolor granular pellets. Uh, We use that for our fish, but we like to mix it up just a little bit. Uh, I do think that the shrimp don't want to eat the exact same thing every single day. Um, They're not really because they're eating biofilms and all this other stuff. But uh, we do have a rotation of seven different foods that uh, we feed every other day. So every two weeks, you know, we're rotating through all of our foods. Also, you want to mix up the food just because um, some foods lack uh, other things as a um, like what is it? The um, oh goodness, I'm spacing the night too. In order to molt, what is it? minerals? So like mineral food will have different things in it, like calciums and stuff that you won't get in like a barley bite. That's not going to have that much nutrients that you need. Shrimp need that different different nutrients to molt and to grow. All right, you want to <laughs> read it off? Passing wind asks, do shrimp eat in, in Infusoria. No. <laughs> uh, so no. I don't think they'll eat them alive, but as they die in your tank, they most certainly will. Shrimp will eat anything that is dying and decomposing pretty much. But yeah, you hit the nail on the head with the, uh, the mineral <laughs> foods and stuff like that. Making me feel so bad. I'm sorry. African orchid dude asked, how slow are caradina to breed in unheated tank? 50 to 65 in winter and up to 80 in summer. pH is 6.2, TDS 90. So I'm thinking the temperature is keeping them slow. It's been three months. Yeah, absolutely. If the temperature is dropping into 50 or 65 degrees, there's a high chance that the shrimp are not going to release or get buried up or anything like that because they know there's not enough food or biofilm readily available to feed the babies and stuff like that. Also, uh, they know that holding the eggs is going to take a lot longer. So if the shrimp are molting every, say, 40 days or so, um, generally speaking, it's every 30 days, every month, they'll molt once a month. But um, smaller, smaller shrimp will molt way quicker than that. But adults... Uh, mature females and stuff like that um if you drop the water below 70 uh you start adding on more days so around 60 degrees i'd imagine you're about at a um i don't know what's going on with her there you go nope all right chat's going haywire tonight i think it's her mouse is it dying it might be dying all right um but 
if the shrimp knows that it's molting every 40 days and the eggs are going to take 45 days for them to hatch, they're not going to waste it because they'll just drop the, the eggs every single time. So um, I think we're good. Are we, we're not good, huh? No, it's good. Okay. Something was stuck. All right, we're back. <laughs> Sorry, just chat kept scrolling at an, an extremely fast rate up and down the chat. So Shelby's got to get back to where it's at. Um, so chances are once the tanks warm back up, you will have uh, breeding again. Um, in those conditions, I might keep a heater in the tank if you wanted breeding throughout the winter. Um, and then I don't know how much water changes you're doing or anything like that, but uh, bumping up your water changes like 50% can definitely help you get breeding throughout the winter. Um, but warmer temps is going to help a lot more. Welcome in Poseidon's Pets for a dollar ninety nine super chat. Said how many ram's horns can I put in a fifty two gallon? All right, so are we talking live ram's horns? Or are we talking wine smashing? Put them in the fifty two gallon tub and and you know with the socks off and just you know trying to make some some quarry cat food or something. What are we talking? clearly a live grant um so like how many can i put i mean pretty much as many as you have you probably don't want to put that many in there but um a 52 gallon can probably house a couple thousand ram's horn snails no problem it really depends on what else you have in the tank and do you want to maintain that many snails because snails are dirty you're going to feed them and it's going to come right right out the other side just like that and uh he was trolling but i would suggest that no one put i mean keep your snails under a wrap so if that means you have to feed them to other fish then maybe do that but um a hundred percent think about feeding if you have to feed that much you're going to cause more waste and not just feeding that much it's if you put them in a shrimp tank and you're putting that much food down, you don't know for sure that the shrimp are all getting enough food compared to how many snails you have. They do swarm those piles and it is harder for them. They do get little specks and everything, but I would say cut down the amount of uh, ram's horn snails or pond snails if you can. You don't want like hundreds. You do want a good colony for sure because um, it does provide a source of food for them at, that way as and well. And then not only food, you're going to have to worry about calcium. So adding in a ton of minerals. Um, we we never really use cuddle bone or anything like that. Um, we have been using the uh, mystery snail. Um, oh, no, they're not mystery snail. The crayfish empire um, oh yeah those things are great yeah calcium tablets that make a little us. hexagon or octagon little pattern uh shapes and uh we've been using those for our rabbit snail shells and they Love they them. look great everybody's been saying how nice the rabbit snail shells look except for one and i'm like listen i just got that one not long ago it was already like that when i got it so yeah. it's still alive four six Some months later hard, so. but calcium is in those um and that's really good for any of your snail shells of course phone died Here's my um phone. but thank you thank you kyle thank hope you're doing you. well appreciate it all right so we talked about food definitely want to mix it up make sure they get a wide range of different nutrients oh man i'm butchering words lately i've also been mixing words that shouldn't be mixed <laughs> um and then another thing is going to be tank size um i've ne i've never had a lot of success in tanks smaller than seven and a half gallons i've bred shrimp in five gallons and the little two and a halfs and threes and stuff like that um but it, it's few and far between and they're a lot more work uh they do a lot better with like 50 percent water changes every week and you really got to do a lot to maintain and make sure that it's spot on so that way the shrimp aren't stressed out because even if it's off just a little bit uh the swings in such a small tank can really cause uh some issues and stuff like that so you want to make sure you get the biggest tank that you possibly can. Um, the smallest that I like to go without having any breeding issues 
uh, with size of colony or the shrimp growing up where the size of the shrimp is 10 gallons. Uh, I have some success a little more with breeding in like a seven and a half gallon uh, than the fives and stuff like that. But uh, in the seven and a half gallon, I find like the shrimp don't quite get to their full potential in size. Um, they seem to like cap out at like three quarters of the way. Um, I've kept them in that tank for quite some time now. Um, the green emeralds with the golden backliner are my seven and a half gallon fluval tank. And they have really gotten to the point where uh, the back line's grown over the side, but the the shrimp is still way way too small compared to the ones in the 55 gallon. So go big or go home, and turn your bathtub into a uh, shrimp tank. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> so we're not doing that. But I'm trying to find questions. That is Lucas's bathtub. <laughs> and both me and Dean pulled out our I phone and took it. a picture of that. Oh, I it. There. It's got a bunch of plants in quarantine from uh, the Pasco Club meeting. 570 Sorry. bags were sold after Dean's talk. I think there was 116 people in attendance for, for the meeting or something like that. Um, our little club has really come a long ways. Uh, I, I'm really happy to be uh, the speaker host and be able to take uh, all these incredible people, take them collecting, and uh, really just kind of sponge all the knowledge I can <clears throat> off of them. Soak it up. You got anything for me? Um, there's a lot of questions. Shrimp just disappear. Why and how? Um. It is possible that there's fish in the tanks or other hitchhikers, such as dragonfly nymphs. Um, it is also possible that they're dying uh, underneath a, a rock or behind the filter or something like that, and you're, you're not seeing dead bodies and the shrimp are just eating them. Uh, the shrimp dies like right when you turn off the lights. Uh, maybe it feels stressed out because it can't see the predators coming or something like that. Um, then next thing you know, uh, all the shrimp are eating that while you're sleeping and then you wake up and you didn't know that your favorite shrimp got eaten and you, you're looking for it for weeks before you, you give up and you're like, oh, I must have got cannibalized. Yeah, they really do tear apart their shrimp really fast. Um, that's also a sign that, like, say something did die and they go to tear it apart and it's gone really fast. It could be because you're not feeding enough as well so it's and a it, good sign it could also be it's not a good sign you have a high <laughs> male to female ratio and your males are stressing out your females um and it, in generally speaking when shipping or when parameters hit the fan or something like that it's your big females that are the first ones to kick the bucket the males those are kind of resilient they don't really got a lot to lose not a lot to live for either so they're just swimming doing their thing and then the juveniles and babies, they're they are a lot more resilient than the adults, period. Last Box Hero says, do you guys only know freshwater shrimp? I recently got peppermint shrimp to breed for cuttlefish food. Sadly, I know things about peppermint shrimp and saltwater shrimp, but you don't want any of my recommendations or suggestions or anything like that. I don't know enough. Um, we tried the sexy shrimp. And we did it in a small five-gallon tank. If I were to say anything, go big. Do like a 40-gallon tank or something like that with salt water. Um, I think the peppermints eat starfish. I, I can't I can't remember exactly. I know one of the shrimp uh, really like to eat starfish. So um, there's some really invasive starfish that you could probably get and grow in one tank and then use those as feeders. But... Again, I haven't looked into salt water in years. I should I should be in doing it though. I'm slacking. Yeah. Daniel Velez said, just lost my pure black line last week after a water change. I do the same water changes for both the yellow King Kong and pure black line. I don't have a clue what happened. Yellow King Kong are okay. Should I place Aquatar in the yellow King Kong tank? Concern. 
Um, I'd be more curious of what your pH is in the tank and what kind of substrate because the one main difference with yellow king kongs and, and crystal shrimp is the yellow king kongs can take a wide range of KH and pH. Uh, so if the pH in the tank is, <clears throat> is a little high, um, you should test not just uh, the water going into the tank, but the tank itself, uh, generally speaking, right after the water change is done, and then the next day uh, to make sure that your soil buffered the water down at appropriate time. Also, uh, I don't know if you mix your water uh, the night beforehand, um, but doing that will gas out your water, and this will help uh, a lot with dropping the pH of the tank and uh, you know, doing the slow water changes can really help with the pH swings. If your water isn't low enough in the barrels or, or uh, buckets when you're mixing your water, dripping it slow can definitely have its advantages there. But if they're perfect, then you don't really have to worry too much about uh, filling up the water that fast, as long as you're not mixing up the, the substrate down below. Um, Aquachar though, um, it's generally speaking, you, you'll see the shrimp freaking out. Um, but it, if you have some and the yellow King Kong tank doesn't, you, it's a good little thing to throw in the tank um, for like a 10 gallon tank. It only costs $2.50. So you might as well just throw that in there as a precaution. It's not going to hurt. And Posse, when the store does take um, Amex. Get that was a Shelby thing. question. I had no idea. American Express. Oh, okay. Glad you work in retail. It's not for me. Um, the next thing I'm going to go on is lights. Uh, lighting can definitely help with uh, breeding uh, and trick them in the wintertime. So if you're not getting a lot of breeding in the wintertime and you're just using like an eight-hour time cycle or something like that on your light timers... Uh, try opening up the blinds or uh, turning on another lamp or light in the room. Uh, increase the amount of daylight that the shrimp are getting and tricking them into thinking it's a longer summertime rather than uh, the shorter winter months. Uh, also, the longer light cycle is going to help increase the amount of biofilm in the tank. Uh, the colder water is, is going to hurt the growth of biofilm, so more light can definitely help reverse that. Um, and then the lack of lights, uh, it, it's kind of going to affect the pigment of the shrimp a little bit. And you're not really going to be able to see uh, coloration pattern and stuff like that. So I definitely encourage having the strongest lights you possibly can uh, without, you know, algae just going out of control. Um, one thing I do want to say, Nathan, he said I'm going to be restarting 10 gallon. I failed as a shrimp keeper. We all make mistakes, things happen, things that we don't want to happen. Um, you're never gonna be perfect at anything, but you know, don't be afraid to reach out to me or Grant and maybe we can start crossing things off the list to find out what went wrong so that it doesn't happen in the future. A lot of times it's really hard to tell off of just like one thing. So like if we could go, well, let's test this to this to this and we'll usually conduct and figure out the reason it's happening. So I did have this for a little bit further down the list, but I, I, I'd like to bring it up now at this time because uh, we have a member at our club. Uh, he's an active member, goes to both Tampa and Pasco meeting, uh, bought not just shrimp off of us, but shrimp off of other people. Um, and, you know, just wasn't having any luck, couldn't figure it out. Um, and I basically ran through everything on this list and I couldn't figure out what was wrong other than the fact that uh, the KH was a little off to the rate GH ratio or something like that. And I asked, do you have a water softener? Uh, and he was like, yeah, I, I do. And I'm like, I don't know why, because he was adding salts back into the water to make the right water parameters and everything like that. Um, I don't know what the water softener was doing or adding to his water or taking something out that we're not measuring. But if you don't have luck um, with a water softener and keeping your shrimp, uh, I think what he's doing now is he's using Zephyr Hills water or something like that. Like he buys the big 
uh, five gallon containers or something like that. He was just getting a different water source that didn't run through a water softener. Now, I just checked with them at the last meeting. Shrimp are still doing good. Uh, so, you know, being persistent, it can definitely have its rewards. And he just loved those blue shrimp. He just kept trying. And on this last batch, he's successful. He's got breeding. So uh, you never know what it could be. But, you know, just trying and fine tuning. But it's very rare that people have any issues um, keeping them on their tap water. Sibley said, if I breed shrimp outside in Minnesota for three to four months, will the cold babies get big enough to hit the females towards the end of their time in the tubs, or will they not reach maturity by that time? No, so they most definitely will. So say you throw out your adults in April. Well, the first month they might not breed for you, but two months later, they're going to breed. And then, you know, with the June and July uh, months of how hot it can get, you know, uh, August, generally speaking, is uh, the hottest month of the year. Um, and that can definitely uh, crank up the growth speed and the hatch rate and stuff like that. And you could get some ugly males in that last month that are going to tag a bunch of females uh, or generally speaking, a little bit sooner if those shrimp breed uh, within one or two weeks of you putting them out. So uh, it is generally a little bit risky, but I, I think you can do more than three to four months. I think you wait till the end of April, May, June, July, August, and then the end of September. Um, you know, you're still not going to have frozen uh, ice water or anything like that. And then. Uh, you'd probably be good until like the end of October, I'd, I'd imagine, before you get ice on the uh, on the the pond that's going to damage the shrimp or make it hard for you to catch them or anything like that. The only way I think the ice is going to damage is if you get like a flash freeze and the shrimp freeze on the top of the ice. Like you see the, the fish do that sometimes, half in the fish, half in the water, half out of the water. This is aquatic moose. <laughs> Says, do shrimp have emotions? I mean, they definitely get scared. They definitely are mean, so they got to get angry somehow. I mean, we've had some ones that just murder shrimp, so. <laughs> I, I want to call it the, the Punisher shrimp. Yeah. He yeah. would just, everybody, he, he just is he mad, mad at the world, holding a grudge against everyone, so. Got to have some sort of emotions. We just not, we don't know how they display it, but. And then there's always those shrimp that are just real jerks when it comes to feeding time. Yes, they'll take the whole food and just disappear. They it's got to hurt the other the shrimp's babies, feelings, nothing. right? It's got to hurt their feelings. <laughs> um, Larry D, welcome, says, what is a good scape for orange tigers? One that you set up 30 days ago and then you never touch again afterwards. I uh, want to stay away from Siru stone or the elephant stone, anything that's going to leach um, different that phosphates and cage and stuff. Uh, wood is great, like what Shelby plants. might recommended. Uh, you could use some dragon stone. Dragon stone's inert, uh, not really going to cause any issues. You just got to clean the crud out of it. Uh, river stone's real good if you want to put it at the bottom of uh, some nice wood, uh, like Shelby did for our angelfish tank. Um, that's really nice, but the main thing is, is like, uh, you know how you have the gardens that are like a zero scape where you don't have to water, you don't have to weed or do anything. It's all like cactus and succulents and stuff. There's zero work to be done, uh, with shrimp. You want to kind of do like a zero scape where you don't have to trim any of the plants or move anything around or worry about a carpet or anything like that. So, um, that's going to stay true, especially for the orange eyed tigers or the tangerine tigers i'm sorry these said these fish tank said i i have i just got that name i have a planted tank and water is clear and clears up every time i mess with it would you still recommend a water change um yeah i would I stick to a water change routine and and just be consistent with it so for us it's every two to three weeks, and we do around 30 to 40%. And 
you know, you're going to get the best baby survival rate. And as long as, you know, you don't do rush water changes and the parameters aren't off or anything like that, uh, then you're not going to have any issues at all. And the shrimp are actually going to produce and have more numbers for you. You know, like a bird shakes its feathers. That disc is just like shaked all its fins underneath those other ones. That was weird. Hmm. Um, but for sure, always do a water change. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to do a water change unless you like put some random water back in. But will hurt is, uh, you know, ammonia building up. You can't physically see anything becoming a problem. Like you could have ammonia spikes and not see anything wrong with the tank. It could look perfect and ammonia spike can kill all your fish. It just happens. So just because it's clear doesn't mean there's not other issues. All right. And then we talked about wintertime a lot. Um, we're almost coming to that end of the season where uh, the whole uh, pressure in the atmosphere and whatnot is causing my shrimp not to breed. So there's no point in doing water changes or worrying about the shrimp room at all because they're just not going to breed anymore. Um, I've got friends in Minnesota that get breeding all year round in their basement. Um, they do large water changes, they feed, um, and it's really not any issues at all. Uh, they really do well if you just overtake care of them in the winter time. During the summer, they might be just fine with doing the 10% every week or every other week or you know, something like that. But when it comes down to uh, the winter lull, um, you can definitely fight against it, but you know, we're coming up to the end of that where that's not really an excuse anymore. Um, so generally speaking, uh, the beginning of April, uh, you should start seeing pregnant uh, females and, you know, just doing normal water changes and stuff like that. It's definitely going to help pick up. Uh, we do have, like generally speaking, like five tanks here or there um that just no breeding whatsoever and then um you know it doesn't matter whether it's winter time spring fall or summer we always just have five tanks that aren't doing well so a uh, certain shrimp might do it every single winter or something like that maybe that's just the cycle that they're in um maybe the temperatures drop slightly in the house um in the summertime because the heat index has gone up so much in Florida, our AC was only set to a certain um, standard or, or need uh, for the size of unit that we had to keep our entire house AC at the temperatures we want. Um, but like we used to do landscaping, Shel Shelby didn't, but well, my family <laughs> did. And we try to do as much work as you possibly can before noon because noon one two and three o'clock especially two and three o'clock those are the hard, hottest times of the day and if you can get the majority of the hard work done in the morning your day wasn't that bad now i feel so bad driving around town and seeing all the landscapers because by nine o'clock it's brutally already hot the heat index has definitely arisen uh and it's just hotter so um maybe in the winter we'll keep a house at 70 72 summertime it'll be 72 74. Thanks, Vibes Aquatics. Says I'm back, lurking, watching an annual shower. Ooh, love it. Dollar ninety nine super chat. Thank you so much, Vibes. I gotta get with you, Vibes, and find out what shows you're doing this year. Uh, it is. We got our first show next week. Um, and we haven't been doing one in a while. So I thought it was tomorrow. I got my dates wrong. Yeah. Um, but it's it's definitely coming around to that time where we're going to be looking forward to seeing some of you guys again. And it's going to be show season and nonstop. Thank you so much, Tolan Landenberger. Love it. 499 Super Chat says, for a shrimp-only tank, how often and at what percentage should I change the water? So generally speaking, I like to do 10% per week or more, 10% um, at least, 20% uh, every week is like a really good uh, method to follow. If you can't do them every week, though, have no fear, 30 
to 40% every other week is, is just fine. Uh, we do sometimes uh, 40% water changes every three weeks. If we're doing shows or have a lot going on, uh, it's just not possible. But generally speaking, I try to rush as fast as I can to get all of the tanks done every two weeks. Thank you so much. And Sibley Warrior says, $2 Super Chess has accidentally posted some same question three times. My bad. It's okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I hope I answered it. Did we answer the question? Maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe like down below. We'll, oh. we'll see it eventually. If I didn't answer it, somebody help me. <laughs> Send me a message. Tell me what the question was. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, back to the topic why I go find that question. All right, so the winter time that should be over, um, but the there is something on the list that I think is going to shock people, especially after you know I was talking about how many snails I could fit in a fifty-two gallon tank. But there is a certain shrimp in the house that does not breed very well or at all without snails in the tank, um, and you know we do have those. They are quite popular. Uh, Dean did go, oh, my God. You know, when the when I said that I had Sulawese and I had quite a few different types of them going on. Um, so the Sulawese shrimp actually do a lot better with the rabbit snails. They can breed without them. I just think they breed a lot more and they feel a lot more comfortable with the rabbit snails. Um they're one of the, the shrimp that I watch the most. Now, they don't just stand there like other shrimp. They've got these little white mittens, and they dance and box, and they just go crazy and hard all day. And I just don't I, – I don't see many other shrimp that entertaining. So um, I'll be watching them, and they kind of use the, sh the snails as like an alert system. And if the snail gets spooked – and you know goes into its shell almost all of the shrimp know that the snail did that and then they'll go and climb up underneath uh one of the rocks and go hide um they're also one of the only snails that, or they're also one of the only shrimp that when you dip a net into the tank they all know that the game is on and they're being hunted and they'll go and climb up underneath rocks and they're like the hardest shrimp to catch uh, in the wild, they actually collect them by taking rocks and vigorously shaking them underwater and then getting the net underneath them. Wait, the rabbit snails, I got to finish or I'll, they'll never find out. Um, I just got to warn you, though, rabbit snails do eat plants. So, you know, but uh, mostly take that plants with a grain of salt. grow in a Sulawese tank anyway, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. It, it, it's just a really good... Uh, what symbiotic relationship in a fish tank where when you can't really have plants so deck it out with rocks and have some fun just in case you're one of the people out there that just heard rabbit snails ran to google google rabbit snails seeing how adorable they were they are plant murderers <laughs> um but you can you know grow enough plants to keep them happy yeah, if you want to plant a rabbit snail tank that i think it'd look cool so Nathan said, other than moss or moss type plants, what is a good plant to keep with shrimp? Thanks. Boose, Anubis, um, a very slow growing crypt that you're just going to be happy with the fact that one day it's going to shoot a, a, uh, a runner that is going to pop up and grow right in your favorite view of the tank and you're not going to be able to move it. Um, so just accept that fact and crypts are great because they have tons of surface area uh, and, and they do take up and spread out and uh, absorb a lot of those nutrients that fall in through the substrate. Um, floaters uh, are good, but the bigger the better. Uh, frog bit will send roots all the way down to the substrate. So avoid that if possible. But uh, the red root floaters are great. Uh, the salvinia is kind of e easy to shake all the babies off and thin out uh, and help you keep those uh, nitrates down. 
And um, I mean, you could do any plant. What would you suggest if you want to keep a specific plant and it is rooted? Because obviously we've talked about it several times that you could kick up a bacterial infection. My suggestion to you, if you want a specific rooted plant, is to get those little 3D printed pots and throw them in your tanks. Some people don't like it, but you could also to do that. And then like pile rocks around it. So it kind of like hides the fact that it's in a pot and it's not actually rooted into the, the substrate. Um, so you could get away with, you know, some of the other plants like that. I got to advise not to do that because if you wanted to take the plant out and move it and then put it back in, every time the water goes back in and it just it messes up the substrate. I guess you could drain the tank, put it back in. It's just, it's risky business. I don't like pots. Make it work. Coro said, doesn't prime and other water conditioners slash dechlorinators reduce hatch rates? I don't remember about shrimp, but I know it negatively affects hatching and fertility of zebra danios in the lab. Um, I, I don't think it has any issues with our shrimp outside. I haven't done any uh, tests, and this is the first I've ever heard that it reduces fertility rate. Um, it, but, I don't I mean, know... Um, many people that, you know, de, de gas their, uh, shrimp tanks, the gas, the, uh, tap water for their shrimp tanks. Almost everybody adds uh, prime or the, the sea chem safe, uh, which is the powdered prime or the, uh, the chlorine, uh, crystals that remove the chlorine. So the only reason I would think that this would affect anything, especially if they were doing a test, most of these zebra danios were done in like two gallon to five gallon tanks. Now imagine if they were not pre-mixing the water with dechlorinator and they were just adding dechlorinator into the tank after they had filled it, it could affect the danios in that way um, and hatching and fertility rate. So I would say like you'd have to be mixing it at the same time. And if it was poured straight onto say eggs, why like they're not hatching, that, like that's a strong chemical going straight onto an egg that would be bad regardless. So, I mean, it could happen, but it's very rare that it would do anything to the shrimp as long as you're mixing it right and not overdoing it. Some people can, you can overdo prime. Yeah. So. I don't think they overdid it in a lab, but. I mean, it's a small Daniels. tank and you pour it right in, it's going to affect the hatch rate. Zebra Daniels are also prone to cancer, so maybe, uh, you know, just everything that it can possibly cause cancer is going to reduce the uh, birth rate, so it's possible. So supposedly it makes the fish egg shell or capsule or whatever harder to break through. That's strange. We have to look into that. 88 Chevy said, just place an order tonight. Thank you so much. And what's your water change refill method? Hose size, etc. You are all great. Thank you. It's a CJ. Um, so uh, we've got a CJ pump. I don't have the proper pump. I've got a pump that's like 2,500 gallon per hour. And it's way too powerful. It's great for mixing salts, um, but not the best if you want to kind of dial in a tank and then just plug it in and turn it on. Uh, generally speaking, I, I, I way underjudged it and it's kicking out way too much water. So, um, I do have the, uh, the zero pumps from CJ on the way. And, uh, I don't know what size tubing or anything like that, but it doesn't really matter. Um, cause that's going to depend on the pump. Uh, we've gotten different pumps and at different gallon per hours, but for us, we've got the 10 foot five rows of tanks and uh, we need a head height that's going to get us that high. So uh, we need a really powerful pump for that reason. Most people don't have that issue and can use like a, um, a smaller 300 gallon per hour pump and get away with doing their water changes. And then what we do is we just put a T valve and uh, that helps me control the flow and rate of the water that goes into the tank. And then Aqua Top, uh, their 323 gallon per hour uh, tank came with like this little filter uh, nozzle kit for, uh, I, I don't know, the backs of their tanks or something like that. 
uh, as a replacement. And uh, I, I saw that it was the perfect thing to hook onto the top of the tank and then it curves up. Uh, so that way uh, the actual device doesn't dip into the tank. And then um, I just do my uh, water changes by trickling it in from the uh, top of the tank, basically. But that prevents any cross-contamination from one tank to another. So getting Nona says, if you're going to buy raffle tickets to donate, who would be your three picks? I would, I would have to uh, randomize it. Could not pick three, three people, but oh. Donate. I don't know what the question is. Like if you were to buy raffle tickets and then donate them to someone, who are the three people you donate to? Donate them to. Like who would I bring with me, or who I would just give the tickets to? To tickets. I, I don't know. Oh, maybe if you buy raffle tickets to donate. Yeah, who would be your three picks? Obviously, we would just randomize it if we were to donate. Yeah. If we're going, obviously it's just me. And him. <laughs> no, I'd have to take Mark. Mark, Mark speaks Spanish. Then me? Over no me. No habla en español. Over me. No habla en español. <laughs> You're going too. I said you and Mark. There was three no, people. Oh, I did. You can watch that back. You can watch that back. I got that with confidence here. All right. Back to the breeding. If you ain't having enough breeding, uh, you definitely uh, might want to make sure that there's enough hiding spots in the tank for you. Did I skip over fish? I think I skipped right over fish. Anyways, we'll get back to fish. Um, if, if you're not having like good little nooks and crannies for the females to uh, get away from the other males, uh, when one female is releasing hormones, the other uh, males in the tank are gonna go crazy until they find that female. So if one's buried, uh she doesn't have anywhere to go and hide and those females can still tease her uh and mess with her and stress her out there's a chance that she's not going to breed uh and absorb those eggs or drop them all together so uh, definitely want to make sure that there's some moss rock pile um some decorations or something like that in the tanks that the pregnant females can go and uh, camp out just welcome in haven't seen you in a little bit says hey are you all going to aquafest you may have said and i missed it i want to i don't know how soon it is our planning might be horrendous hmm? but we'll wing it and get gumbo and it'll be worth it so um <laughs> it's not it, too far from us so it's, it's on bad. our agenda it's on our to-do list how well we're going to execute it <laughs> We're going to try, though. We're uh, winging it this year. We try to be efficient, and we're we just got, not. We got a lot on our plate, and I've, I've made things a little bit more priority than others. Um, but one of the big things that is on our uh, to-do list is Jaden's room. And things were moving smoothly, and our plumber had not called us today on whether or not he's going to show up tomorrow. So. Well, he shouldn't be showing up tomorrow anyways. Yeah, well, I, I know, but still, <laughs> I wanted to know if he was going to show up. I still would have, you know, worked around I it. I think it's fun, funny. Brickley Bell said, my 12-year-old son just yelled from the living room, hey, mom, is that dude talking about sex? Because he heard Grant talking about breeding. And I said, yes, son, shrimp sex. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah, sorry. And All you got right. Nathan hooked on shrimp. Look at you. You're a shrimp dealer. Not bad. You're, you're, we are super far behind in yeah. chat, though. Mm -hmm. I only got one more thing on my list, and it's just the crap on imports. Oh, we'll, we'll go. <laughs> Jamie, do you ship shirts to Canada? I have not figured that out yet. Uh, email us about that. And Why did I not I just send Chris out. a shirt for you? I knew that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Dang it. But it's more expensive. They don't live near each other. It's more expensive for him to ship somewhere in Canada than it is for uh, us to ship That's in right. That's what it was. Yep. So we that's did, why we I have did talk to about remind it. me of the important things <laughs> that I forget about. Oh, man. All right. If you want to... Oh, okay. 
Cora says, do y'all have leaf litter or driftwood for your aquatic isopods? I was reading that they require wood in their diet, but I wasn't sure how much that impacted their breeding, etc. So one tank, there is a ton of wood. So while I'm answering this, find the next one. We got to run through this. So in one tank, we do have a ton of wood. And it's not even the tank that we sell isopods out of. The seven and a half gallon tank, which is our emerald breeding tank, doesn't have any wood in it. It does have a bunch of uh, Ciru stone, little nooks and crannies to explore and stuff like that. And we do overfeed the tank because there's a bunch of yellow King Kongs in the tank and Malaysian trumpet snails. So they don't need wood. It's not a necessity, but I'm sure if wood is breaking down, they'll eat it. If I put shrimp outside for summer in Minnesota, if I choose the best females and one to two males, well, oh, yeah, that's what it is. We found the question. It was just worded different. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Found it. <laughs> How slow do Caradina breed in unheated... Si oh, someone asked the same question, too. Hopefully they got that first one right. Yeah, we, we answered that probably the right when you asked it. Linda got her stickers today. Glad to hear. Uh, See, if that's you are proof we are getting them out. So the garden of eater at gmail.com. Did I say that right? Com. There we go. That sounded weird. And why don't you ask? Do the imports. All right. So uh, I had mentioned before that the imported shrimp, there is a big toll. Uh, and stress load that goes on the shrimp. And a lot of that stress is placed on uh, the reproductive organs. Uh, another thing uh, that can happen is they can stress out and get stunted and stop growing. Uh, a lot of the imported uh, caradina that I was buying when I was just a hobbyist and trying to uh, start breeding and grow out my own colonies, uh, a lot of the ones that I was getting uh, around one centimeter would never grow and gain any sign size. They would always be one centimeter, a uh, year and a half old, two years old. They just never put on any weight or anything like that. Uh, and I've never really seen that happen except for imports, different sellers. Um, and then, you know, I've bought in from probably over a hundred different homebred uh, shrimp breeders and I've never had shrimp not grow up like the imports. <laughs> Uh, I think what happens is they go through the x-ray machines and not all the shrimp are going to go through the x-ray machines. They're really like random inspections and stuff like that. So, uh, and it really depends on what airport they go through or that they're inspected by hand instead of by through x-ray. Do they pull the bags out? Uh, a lot of different things can go. Um, but I think when they go through the x-ray, it damages the reproductive organs uh, and they're just not able to breed like the homebred shrimp can. Uh, they also don't uh, acclimate and adapt to water parameters nearly as easy. Uh, the neocaridinas are generally speaking full grown. And you don't know if that shrimp is two to three years old. Uh, it can grow in your tank for a week. And then, bam, it's on its way out. And you think your parameters are off when and all it was was just a really old shrimp. Christopher Gonzalez coming in with a four ninety nine super chat says, "Is a dirty plant aquarium capped with sand safe for shrimp?" Sorry for going off topic. So, a big issue with the capped aquarium sand uh, and dirted plants is that capped sand is going to hold down the fort. Um, but if you ever, you know, remove the little bit of sand, shift it, or anything like that. You're going to release the Kraken, and all of those little tiny nasties are going to come out from the uh, substrate and go right into your water column. Uh, another thing is if you ever want to, even if there wasn't shrimp in the tank and you're going dirted aquarium uh, with sand, if you ever move a plant, even if you do it slowly, you're shifting the levels whatsoever one way or another. And this is going to lead to, you know, a dirtier tank than what you want. Uh, I, I really recommend uh, looking into aqua soil or something like that. Uh, and then you don't really have to cap it. You can if you want to, but 
it's a little less risky and uh, a lot less messy. And if you were to do that, only do it with uh, Neo Caradina shrimp. Do not do that with Caradina shrimp. You will lose them. Yeah, because the, the sand, that's going to cap your buffering capabilities. Yeah. Thank you so much for the super chat. Much appreciated. I lost my spot, so. Uh, that, that's it. I, I don't really have any other. Uh, oh, fish. That's right. I forgot about the fish. So uh, some of you have been around long enough. This story has probably gotten a little tiring on you. You're going to get bored. Feel free to leave. I'm fine with that. But uh, the red cherries that I had in a 20-gallon tank, probably my main red cherry tank for years. Uh, no, no issues with it. Breeding, producing, great red cherry tank. Um, always wanted to get pygmy quarries. And when I finally got my hands on them, I wanted to put them in my best tank. I didn't want to risk losing them or anything like that. I also wanted to give my best chance at breeding them. Uh, so I thought throwing them in the red cherry tank, even if they were eating some of the babies and stuff like that, uh, I want the, the quarry cat babies more. And uh, the quarries went in the tank, never really saw any breeding from the quarries. Um, but what almost immediately stopped was the red cherries stopped getting buried. They were, they were not producing uh, eggs anymore at all. And then I uh, gave them months and months of time. But watching the tank, you know, you'd see the females go into the little hiding spots and, and trying to be uh, nice and peaceful and relaxed. And the next thing you know, you got this school of Corys just messing up their day, disturbing the peace, ludicrous DTP, and it's going to move. And yeah, some of you might know the rest of the song, but um, they, they just don't mix very well. If you're trying to breed uh, your red cherry shrimp, uh, the more shrimp you, or more fish you put in the tank, the less breeding you're going to get. And uh, it's just true with just about any fish you throw in there. Um, and then we found out, you know, autos. Everyone thinks that the auto cats, uh, they're, they're never going to eat your shrimp. Of course they're going to eat your shrimp. They'll eat their own babies. Why wouldn't they eat their own shrimp? So um, I, I definitely wouldn't put fish into a tank where you're worried about uh, breeding at all. Tolan said, I'm in Colorado. What's the best place to buy Caradina shrimp from? Well, I can tell you where not to buy Caradina shrimp in Colorado, but I'm not going to go there. Um, you're lucky enough, she doesn't do shrimp anymore. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. But, um, oops, sorry, uh, I don't know of anybody in Colorado right now. There is somebody, and I can't think of their name. I feel horrible. Oh. I'm talking about. Nope, forgot. I'm bad with things. Don't Man. ask me. I I could come back with that one. Uh, you can email me, and maybe I'll remember that uh, and be able to give them the proper shout out. Uh, man, I think it's really or something. All right. Um, but you know, there's plenty of people that ship. Um, you might want to check out uh, one of the clubs. Uh, a while back, we did get a lot of people in Colorado into Caradina at the Colorado Aquarium Society. Uh, we brought a lot of colonies of Caradina that surprisingly sold quite well. So uh, also the pet stores up there, um, man, there's, there's one of the pet stores, like the Fish Gallery or something like that, that has Caradina on the, on the counters. It's not Fish Gallery. Yeah, it's fish not gallery Fish Gallery. Good. It was, it was one of the nicer... <laughs> Uh, pet stores, though. Can't remember the name. Thank right you now. so much for that 999 super chat. Um, but we do ship, and we have a very low DOA rate to Colorado. I just can't remember his name. I don't want to recommend myself, so email me, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I'll look it up in messages. I'll find it. Might only do Neo Caradina with my luck. That was just a waste of time. So I, I'm still going to find it and I'll, I'll write it down for next stream. If I see you again and you don't email me, 
We got you. Sorry, I keep having to jump down, so then I lose my question. There's here's one. All right. Brandon said, "Does that also include running a water softener, then running it through a RODI filter? RODI should eliminate anything that the water softener may add." Yeah, that that is true, and it, and it's also removing all of the parameters. So um, the guy that was using the water softener was relying on you know, the KH in the water and some of the minerals from that water softener and then supplementing the other half. So they might have only been getting three-fourths of what they actually needed uh, and wasn't enough to get them going and molting and breeding. So um, I don't like water softeners when it comes to the shrimp breeding. And generally speaking, I talk to a lot of the old timers in the clubs and stuff like that and all the ones that have the water softeners uh, for their fish, they talk about all these different fish that they just can't keep because of the water softener. Um, so if you've got a way around it, the RO unit, and you can mix all of your water from, from scratch, RO water is basically making rainwater. Uh, so you're not re relying on any of the other salt content. So you, you should be fine. Boots and Cass asks, what about eggshells? I believe that was a food question, I believe. Or adding uh, it to for the snails or oh, calcium yeah. or minerals or anything like that. Just be um, careful. You could foul up the water really fast. With yeah, eggshells. egg is super, super dirty. Um, when they used to breed discus back in the day and they had to pump the egg through mesh to make little tiny worms, uh, artificial worms to feed the discus, um, it would make the water so gross and so nasty and that's why people think that the discus need 90 percent water changes every day no they need a 90 percent water change every day at, after every time you feed them an egg that's what they need um so if you do do eggshells make sure they're pristine nice and clean um and no leftover egg on them whatsoever toski said do you guys feed the cats aquatics food to your shrimp we have um i i have two complaints about the cats aquatics foods um and, and they're they're really just me being bougie and, and complaining about my fingers um one is i don't like the food and how long it lasts in the tank i understand it's a mineral and a calcium food it's meant for that um but i like to supplement other foods and when a piece of food lasts in the tank three or four days I don't think the shrimp are actually getting the amount of food um, that you want to be supplementing into them. Um, so I, I like to rotate and I like to see the foods go on the next day. And so to break up the pieces into smaller pieces so that even my bigger colonies can devour it in one day, it just, it, they're so hard and so like, they're not small enough. So it's just, it's too hard to snap in between your fingers. It's possible, but when you're doing 300 tanks, I just wish they sold them in like half size portions or quarter size of what they come in. Yeah, I would not particularly choose it for shrimp, but maybe some big mystery snails. You could do it that way. And, That'd be good minerals for them. So. The, the other complaint is I don't like the mix of different types in the same container because I'm not going to feed all three of the same colors to the same tank. So I, it I'd like last way too long and yeah, the water. I, I'd like, you know, a rotation of all of the foods that they had to offer in separate containers. Malcolm Reynolds asks, how long should it take for a shrimp to molt? And how long after are they squishy slash vulnerable? So as soon as a shrimp molts, it is going to be squishy. Um, shrimp that are fresh newborn, they're they're molting within a week. Uh, juveniles can molt every every week, every two weeks, every three weeks, up until about two centimeters, and then they're going to be molting uh, every 30 days on average. Uh, older adults are going to take a lot longer, but shrimp, just like reptiles, they never actually stop growing. So the molt is actually their body getting too big for their skin, and they have to lose it or else they're going to be tucked like a fat man in a small jacket. And then they'll rip through their flesh and then die. So they have to have something that they can just let go of and change into a new jacket. Um, and yeah, so they're um, super squishy for about you know the first week after they molt. 
John Morgan asked, any updates on the reef tank? No, we've got to get everything set up in the garage. Um, before the garage is set up, I've got to set up the um, the son's room. So hopefully get moving on that next month. Definitely want to have it done before Sam Scales gets here in May. Simply said, my shadow panda tank originally had eight shadows. I neglected it and now have five shadows, but ten blue bolts and two Missouras. Long term, should I remove everything except the shadows in that tank? Um. So here's the beauty about Taiwan bees is you can keep all of them in the same tank and they're just going to make a really fun and colorful, easy Skittles tank. You're not going to have all of the colors, but blue, red, white, black, you know, you're, you're going to have those four colors. You can get a little purple as they mature if you're lucky, but uh, you, you really, it's up to you. If you want to tank a just shadow pandas, do that. Um, but the Blue Bolts and the Missouras are almost always going to be an off product of your Shadow Pandas. You can get them to breed true, but it's just not as easy. Getting the Blue Bolts to breed really true is going to be easier, but those Blue Bolts are still going to throw a Missoura every now and then. You want to breed the Missouras, you're going to get a mixture of Shadow Pandas and Blue Bolts. So uh, it's really what, what you feel like you want and uh, what colors you want to look at more. Abstract Aquarius said, what do you use to dissolve the salts? I use paint mixer and drill mix to mix it up well. Uh, we have a pump. It's like a 1,200 gallon per hour pump. Just a really cheap one that uh, we got off of Amazon or eBay. Um, and it, it, I don't worry about the head height or anything like that. I just drop it in the container and I leave it running overnight. Joel Jennings asks, what do you know about the ocean blue caradina that I see popping up for import everywhere? What do you want to know? I can tell you everything. I can tell you who their mother is, where they come from, what, what kind of car they drive, you name it. I can, I can tell you the ins and outs. So when you cross a blue bolt with a tangerine tiger, a serrata, shrimp, aurora, cheetah, it doesn't really matter. They're going to produce a an incredible amount of the hybrids in the hobby that we know today. Red Steel, Blue Steel, Galaxy Pintos, Nanashi, uh, Advanced Nancy, uh, the Boas, the, the Pythons, the Metallics, the Purples, the Backlines, uh, Tang Tai. There's an incredible amount of shrimp that come out of that cross. One of them is Blue Steels. Blue Steels, though, have several different phenotypes that come out. And the perfect blue steel in some people's eyes is the blue head with a nice white snowflake dots and crystal pattern on the head and then pure white belly. Like the whiter the white on the back, the, the higher the grade uh, in some people's opinion for, for blue steels. Um, then the other people will go, oh, it doesn't matter if it's full blue or whatever, but there is another shrimp that comes out of the blue steels where the pattern is almost splotchy. Like you'll get one color blue and then another color blue and white or no white, or there can be green on the head and different color blues. But those are crazy blues. They're just not perfect or what anybody actually considers of what you think of as a blue steel. And so these crazy blues, they're crazy, right? They don't know what they're doing. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what color they want to be. But sometimes some of that blue is just like the color that your name is highlighted over here. And uh, that is what makes it an ocean blue. It's just a crazy blue that threw that color blue pattern. It's not that rare. It's not some crazy mutation. And it's certainly not a pure blue bolt. So... Um, yeah, they're, you should do a water change. Always do a water change. If you're asking, you should do a water change. If it, well, he's almost at the 30 days. I would wait till that 30 days and do that water change. I think he's like two days off or something for the 30 day cycling. So just wait a couple days. Yeah. Should have done it two weeks ago. Just, <laughs> lately I've been having difficulties with my tap water somehow changed KH levels after years. Used to be GH of 5 and KH of 3. Now, some, somehow I have GH of 8 and a KH of 10. 
I can see some shrimps struggling with molts. Any recommendations? Um, so I don't know if you have a water softener at all, but any time that I see the KH higher than the GH, generally speaking, uh, there's a water softener involved. And I just found out that they could be doing that at your water treatment facility. Um, so that might be something you want to check on. But anytime 10KH um, or your KH is higher than your GH, I see incredible uh, resemblance with other people where they have issues in breeding and keeping shrimp. And it's, it's almost always it has a water softener uh, on the property. There's been one case where the water company was softening the water. Um, I, can't re I can't remember what product they were using, but it, um, if you can remineralize RO water or uh, use, um, you know, the Zephyr Hills water or something like that for your shrimp until they, the, they might be just treating it for calcium deposit or something like that. And after a while, it'll go back to normal. So it's definitely worth checking your, your tap water for a while. No yawning. Aaron Time said, change doesn't affect us, Shelby. Distilled versus RO, pros and cons. Um, it, it's, it doesn't really matter if you're taking everything out of the water and then you're adding our shrimp salts back into it. it, it I don't really see an issue. Um, for me, just RO water by itself, the filters don't last as long as the distilled ones. So if anything, and you're using distilled, I just feel like I get a longer life out of my filters. And it makes no sense to me. I just think the filters aren't working as good and the distilled part is taking out the rest of it. It's only coming in with 499 Super Chats. I just did is, distilled it. Yeah. Is eBay or Craigslist a good source for shrimp? So... Um, there are definitely good sellers on eBay uh, and, and Craigslist for sure. Uh, you definitely want to look into reviews and stuff like that. Uh, also check on the lines and the shrimp. Um, there's, I, I think, So Shrimp on eBay, who has been breeding shrimp for a very long time since we've been in the hobby. Um, and I, I've never heard anything bad about their lines of shrimp. Um, there's definitely sellers out there and, and issues with buying buying shrimp on eBay. So you got to check the source just like you do when buying from anything. Um, but we, we've we sold uh, shrimp on Craigslist and I've bought in uh, tanks and full colonies of shrimp off of Craigslist. I just don't check anymore because you go fishing enough and you come out empty. You go to a different fishing hole. Thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. Thank you for that. And I've lost my spot again, so All it's right. gonna be a minute. Oh, I already read that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know about that. And I know that Dr. Anthony was talking earlier about um, that channels should buy their own raffles and do a giveaway. I know you mentioned that comment in there earlier. And I had talked with Shelby about doing that already. Yeah, so we we'll just, discuss it before it's over. We haven't had a lot of time to think about anything lately. We went collecting with Dean, went fish uh, room exploring, fish farm exploring, and uh, it's Jaden's birthday tomorrow. So we've been planning and doing a lot of stuff around that. Um. We just have to catch up. I think we, I just fell way too far behind. So if you have a question, just ask it again, please. Nathan said, should shrimp always be drip acclimated? I recently tried some blue diamonds, but failed. So I'm tracing my steps to see where I went wrong. Last I see, I had one left. So if you're just popping and dropping and you added tank water from the bag into the tank or anything like that, you definitely cause some issues. I wouldn't say that shrimp should always have to be drip acclimated because there is people that have success with the plop and drop. But plop and drop is always going to be more riskier than drip acclimation. If you have the patience and the ability to do the drip acclimation, by all means, 
you get yourself some air hose and a bucket and, and drip acclimate them because you are going to have your highest success of getting those shrimp to survive and then breed. So um, the only way that I really plop and drop is if I'm going from this tank to this tank or that rack to that rack. And, you know, if I'm taking anything from uh, inside and putting it into the garage, I'm going to drip back and make because there's going to be a good 10 uh, degree difference. And I want those shrimp to warm up before I uh, just throw them into a, a hot pot. And then speaking of hot pot, so good. But Coro said, have you had your weekly tie day yet? <laughs> Is there tie pie for pie day tomorrow? We actually went tonight and all the tables were taken up and we did not have time to wait because of the live stream tonight. So Thai I food wouldn't tomorrow. have waited that long um, anyways. People really, yeah, we're not getting Thai food tomorrow. It's going to have to wait Jayden's till Wednesday. birthday is tomorrow on pie day, which is funny because he really doesn't care for pie too much. I think he likes pumpkin, but I think he really just likes the whipped cream on pumpkin. <laughs> he actually likes the pumpkin pie. So it's funny that we're going to have to find him a pie that he actually likes. But. I love pie, except for cherry and peach. We're going to do some laser tag tomorrow. No tie over there. We're going to I want to probably find, get what Jaden wants, which will probably be like Little Caesars. Or <laughs> I want to find out if he's place. tall enough to go to the indoor go-karts. I think he'd like that oh, more. Oh, he's definitely tall enough. I think he'd like that more. Well, Make up your mind. We could do both. I'm just saying. Yeah. I think the indoor golf carts has laser tag too. So They've got to both be tall enough. But. Layla's not. Layla can ride with me, though, so she wins every race. You can ask my friends. I always win. She was Savage. I did, <laughs> I did T-bone my friend's dad one time when we were playing. We were doing it. It was not good. He never looked at me the same. It was, a, it was an accident. <laughs> he hit a wall, and I was going too fast. So it wasn't my fault. It does but like he never pizza looked pie. at me the same. Oh, pizza pie. Yeah, he does. <laughs> You're right. Pizza pie. He's not broken. He he likes pizza. <laughs> you don't Have like a good pizza. night, You're, Rob. You're broken. So thanks for the stream. Thank you for watching. It's much appreciated tonight. Some of the people we were trying to answer probably already left. We had quite a few people on tonight. Oh, here we go. Brandon says, if shrimp stays still. What would you suspect what's going wrong? I've heard of them bouncing around the tank being a sign of something, but not about staying still. If all of the shrimp are in the tank and staying still and not really acting to food, then I'd be suspect of there being a toxin in the tank, and I definitely want to try to add some aquachar in there. Um, but if they're just staying still and chilling and hanging out, um, you know, maybe they're full and happy and not really much going on. And when you turn the lights off, they turn into active, busy bodies and go around and scrum around for food and stuff like that. But if your, you know, colony is a decent size and you throw food in there after you've starved them for two or three days, you know, don't just be putting food in on top of food and then, oh, they're not eating. Um, if you haven't fed for a couple of days and you feed a good food that they always come out for and eat, and they're not moving, then yeah, I'd say there's some type of toxin in the water or it's too cold. A lot of times when the shrimp are too cold outside in the totes, I won't feed at all because I know they just won't go to the food. They'd rather stay where they know they're protected and not anything wrong uh, rather than risk going out on top of that food pile. There are some brave soldiers, though, that just man out and grab the food all for themselves. So <laughs> we throw it in there. Ooh, ooh asked unrelated question but i just bought some triple red line akadame uh how would you go along setting it up knowing that akadame can absorb minerals and lower tds so i i would just go for it and not worry about it set the tank up for 30 days and that's why oh i i fail to mention this i think in most of my videos but i really like to do the water 50% water change two weeks in through the cycle, not just to make sure the water is pristine and add a little bit of extra beneficial bacteria and stuff like that, but a lot of it is just to balance out those minerals. Not all substrates or uh, akadama or akadama, I, I've heard it called both, I don't know which one's right, um, but 
I've heard it not just absorbing minerals, but also leaching a little bit of minerals too. So I don't know if the leaching the minerals is just that people weren't mixing them up thoroughly enough. And then the next day, the minerals were fully dissolved in the water or what has it. Um, but I generally don't worry about it. I run it for two weeks, do my 50% water change, run it for another two weeks, do my 50% water change, and then Shelby tests the tank for the parameters. And if she tells me it's good, uh, I throw them suckers in there. But uh, I don't worry about it absorbing uh, the minerals because it's not going to happen for very long. I'm not going to come up and do your water testing, though. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Abstract Aquarius said I shined a flashlight and my shrimp fainted. Is there a, is that common or do I got fainting goat type shrimps? I That's think you hilarious. just spooked it and it was just like, whoa, dude. Did you imagine if you gave and it a it was like attack? playing playing dead or possum or like trying to figure out if it should move or not. I don't think it's like a, a reflex all shrimp have, but I also think like not all deer are gonna stand in front of a, a car and look at it you know, deer in the headlights situation. So maybe that's just what happened to that individual shrimp. Maybe you gave that thing a heart attack and shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. I do it all the time, but I've never seen them like that individually. Nathan said, Thank, thanks for answering all these questions tonight and in every stream. We try to. If I miss anyone's questions, please ask it again. She already admitted yeah. to missing them. So yeah. Hobby guy said, what substrate would you recommend for a planted and shrimp tank? Our go-to is Brightwell. Uh, we used to be sponsored. We're no longer sponsored by Brightwell. But it's still the most bang for your buck. And I still have tanks that are running off of Brightwell. And the tanks haven't turned to mud. And they're almost four uh, to five years old. Um, I, I set up a bunch of uh, new substrates this year. I'm testing quite a few of them. Um, I haven't, you know, gotten results to say, oh, this one's just as good or this one's worse or this one's better. Uh, I want to let them run the full year. Uh, this 110 gallon tank rack uh, was almost set up a year ago. Uh, Facebook memories, what Facebook is best for, right? Reminded me that a year ago we painted and trimmed the wall like two days ago. So the tank stand will a be going. Year? Yeah. <laughs> a year ago, that 110 gallon tank wasn't there. A year really ago, good. these tanks weren't there, but those tanks weren't there, but that tank wasn't there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we've done a lot. There's been a lot going on. But in that last year, we've tried Tropica, the Oasi. Both types of fluval substrate. So those have been the running a year. The not yet, Shelby. Oh. That's what I'm getting at. Sorry. <laughs> Almost. Uh. And then what I think I'm going to do is give you, hey, this is our year in review on these substrates. However, the pride and true substrate that we use is Brightwell. Now, if you can go back in time with the time machine and you can go get yourself some ADA, the original blend, Woo, do that. That is that is the golden standard for sure. Brightwell is as close as you can get, but you know it's not the same because that original ADA might leach ammonia for like two to three months. Not everybody liked that, but once you got that past that ammonia, that, that the substrate was great. The, the, the pH was as low as it could possibly be, as stable as it can be, and Brightwell is almost just like that. Not quite as low on the pH, but it's super stable. But it doesn't leach the ammonia that ADA does. So a lot of people will prefer that. Um, and very, very stable on the pH, just not as low. So, All right. I'm interrupting you because Jeff Kane is just getting crazy. It's been on. I've seen you on so many streams lately. You are the goat of these streams for all these people that want the memberships that can't afford it sometimes so i want you all to give a big thank you to jeff kane because he has not only donated on our channel but several channels in the fish fam he is helping everyone out um so thank you so much and i 
believe everyone appreciates it when they they can't afford things and someone does such a kind gesture for them. So here's your thank you donation video. <laughs>、yeah, you're the man. Even before I saw、uh, or Lucas brought you up and then chat, I saw your name on his chat and I was almost like, my man, Jeff Kane. But I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know like, how, how much、uh, wiggle room I've got on Lucas' s stream before I like.、No. You spoke when to speak i n g to, okay? <laughs> I let Dean be the whole、uh, spotlight there for that one. Then- Just like Chris was for the other one. I get to go to Lucas's house quite a bit. I try to make Shelby not talk as much as possible. <laughs> Say something again.、Like、Come、it. on, I could do it. <laughs> You're doing it to me the other night. How does it feel? <laughs> wait, she's got to talk this week. I can't wait. I'm going to sit there with my notepad and I'm just going to count every time she、oh、says, um.、Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's、okay? what she did to me. Thank you so much, Jeff. Everyone who got gifted a membership does get our sticker. So please email us at thegardenofeater at gmail.com. Make sure to include your real name, your YouTube name, and your address. And I will send those out. And here is your welcome video because you are a Caradina member now. So, if you guys are watching and you're in Florida next week, if you want to be this weekend, <laughs> Saturday at the Tampa Bay Aquarium Society, Shelby is having her very first talk aquascaping demonstration ever.、Uh, it is a biotope talk.、Uh, she took some incredible photos while we were collecting with Dean. Uh, we've got other photos from other collecting trips.、Uh, she's got、uh, a little skate planned out.、Uh, it was a little struggle at first. Darmesh was setting her up to fail with the little <laughs>、no. uh, fluval shrimp tank or、out. whatever it was. Not that it's a bad tank, but it's just tall. And there's not a lot of pieces of wood that would go in that tank that would look nice and the skate fill out. And Shelby get to put in something that would actually survive in that biotope of a tank. So、mm-hmm. it was really limiting her options to at least kill these fish. <laughs> Nobody wants to bid on something for at least kill these fish. Come on now. Not in Florida. If it was Washington, maybe, but we're in Florida. And so Shelby's got, what, a nine gallon of the Fluval Flex tank to escape. And、uh, I- I'm really excited for the talk.、Um, He's、I know she's saying that I, I haven't、right? given her any like good credibility <laughs> or you know, any、uh, reinsurement that she's going to do a talk, but it's just because I'm putting the pressure on. So, you know what I mean? She, she lives up to the expectations, right? Just, I just have to point out I was very harsh with Grant because I see his full potential and I wanted him to be critiqued to be better. Um, he can handle it. I will cry myself to sleep at night if he makes fun of me. And I keep telling him he's going to have you know, his little notebook all the way in the back and he's just going to check every time. And I know I'm going to say, um, at least a few times. And he's just, I'm going to see him back there making a check mark. But, anyways, very nervous, very excited. She has、um, nothing to be nervous about, though. Hopefully, some pictures will go up online of the finished product. Um, if you watch my TikToks, you kind of know what I'm going to be doing. And then I'm just going to be talking about、um, you know, fish that I've collected in Florida, what, how easy it is to do biotopes. There's contests throughout the year you could do.、Um, so、you know what、really、I should、fun. do? I should live stream it.、Um, I, you would have to get the okay from the club. No, I'd have to get the okay from you. You're the speaker.、Mm, okay. But well, I, it might be different. I'm、me. not asking your permission. I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Maybe that's for members only.、Mm, All right. So Kyle said, Do you use DI water and remineralize it for Neos?、Um, no, we just use the tap water and then take out the prime. We're really lucky. We have really good quality tap water.、Um, not everybody is so lucky. An hour south of us comes out at 700. 
total dissolved solids. If my tap water was that high, I'd probably cut it with RO water or DI water just because not that many people in America have over 300 total dissolved solids. Some of them are like at 60. Some of them are at 300. A lot of the majority of our customers are in the between. So 180 is like right in that middle sweet spot. So I like to keep that. So people don't really have to mess with the water parameters. They can just drip acclimate and the Neos are good to go. All right. Chance Larson, $2 super chat. Have you used any Denarily substrates? I can't ever say it right. It's like Denarily. Denarily. Yeah, whatever. Any good? So... We have, we have some tanks that are running with the Nearly Substrate. Actually, our main Tangerine Tiger tank, which has been moved to the garage now, is uh, the Nearly Substrate. It's been going for um, a long time. The only, my only complaint about the Nearly Substrates are they're not uniform, and then we use them for the shrimp contest, and every time we pour that, they're a little bit dirty. Like There's little sticks and twigs that we have to pull out of that that I don't really see in any other substrates. And for whatever reason, it's not really popular among European breeders, but I have no issue with it. It, it buffers the substrate, lasts pretty decent. It can turn to mud a little bit quicker than, you know, the, the bright well and other sub, some other substrates might. But, um, you know, if, if it's the one your store carries and you don't have to pay for shipping and it's there, it's not a bad, it's not a bad option. Yeah. I, I like their foods a lot more than I like their substrate. Though. I would use it more towards tigers than I would, like, you know, specialty um, pintos or higher-end shrimp. You want to make sure that's solid, solid substrate. Like, no complaints. Yeah, there there is a little bit of a temper, not a temperature, a pH swing uh, when leaving the lights on too long in the, during the day with it as well. Just like the SL Aqua will do that. Uh, that's what it's... Uh, kind of got a bad rep for. But thank you for the $2 super chat. And then we got another one from Vibes, the 99 super chat. It says, Shelby, you going to live stream your talk at Tampa. If we get the okay from the club members, I will let Grant do the live stream for my talk, which would be Saturday around 12. It's 1 p.m. or 12 p.m.? Uh, 12 p.m. 12 p.m. Yeah, so it'd be an early talk. And I got to make sure the Wi-Fi in that place is good enough because yeah, I don't want to butcher Shelby's time. whole thing when it's all choppy. So yeah. um, do great minds think alike or did you hear me say it? And then, you, you know, had I think to it was at it the same there. time that Woo! you were I saying great it. minds think alike vibes. We're, we're, we're on the same <laughs> same vibe train. Thanks for the donation. <laughs> And then, what was the next question? Sorry. I know. Oh, you're good. We got, we got three minutes here, Shelby. And then oh. I think we've got to kill it because I, it is a little rough tonight with the time difference. I'm feeling a little jet lag kind of, you know? It says maybe it'll help with raffle ticket giveaway. For sure. For sure. We were trying to kind of do that surprise, so I shouldn't have brought it up. But <laughs> that's my bad. Coro said, well, what's your verdict on the Aquion shrimp substrate? I have some at home and embarked a, uh, for a tank. Should I buy something else to replace it? I didn't know Aquion had a shrimp substrate, so I don't have a verdict on Aquion. I have a verdict on the Aqua Vitro and the Fluval, but it's, it's a short verdict. I, I can't really give you a so far so good. You know what I mean? Um, but there's a real advantage with Brightwell and it lasting three to five years. If you're buying one of the other substrates I just named and it, it kicks out on me after shortly after a year of use, it might be worth spending a little extra or waiting that a little extra time to get it shipped to your house than just buying what you can get from the store. I know Aquion, Fluval, the, the Seachem Aqua Vitro, most of those products are readily available at Petco, PetSmart, Pet Supermarket, or um, Pet Supplies Plus. So uh, I definitely want to find an option that people can go out to their store and buy. Um, but a lot of times, if your store has salt water, it will have Brightwell products as well. 
And if they have any Brightwell products, chances are their rep uh, or wholesaler can bring in the uh, substrate for you on their next order, and then you don't have to pay the shipping fees. Cora says, have you looked at having a coffee grinder or like dedicated blender cup for shrimp food? I know some people like to powder their food to feed the biofilm instead of the shrimp. I'm 100% against powdered foods. Uh, we sell the baby powdered food on our website. I like using it as a fry food for our fish, as well as uh, if you have the, um, oh man, the filter feeder shrimp, the bamboo shrimp, sorry. Uh, those are a must have is the powdered foods for those. Um, but powdered foods can do more harm than good if you're feeding too much of it. And it's just a lot easier to keep your water pristine and algae out of the tanks if you just feed the pellet food. She said, my thought is for those mineral sticks that are too hard, if you powder them, um, the shrimp and biofilm will absorb these minerals and the shrimp will eventually eat the biofilm and get the minerals. Yeah, but I also want to know how much food and, and, and everything that's in the water column. That's why I like being able to see all the food be eaten within two to three hours. That way I know it's in the food stomach and not all in the water stomach. column floating around because it's not just biofilm and whatnot that's going to eat it at that point when it's in the water column other things are eating it have you guys tried secum onyx until now any chance we have not tried the onyx sand i don't believe we have a tank of onyx sand i didn't even know that's a product yeah so it's it just right yeah i already looked it up oh. no both of our phones are dead um oh. but it's just like an onyx sand um, I don't think it has buffering capabilities. It says wash and bag. So oh. if it had buffering capabilities, it would not be recommending washing it at all. Yeah. Um, that's a good way to tell whether you're sand or anything that you're buying. If it says to rinse it, usually it doesn't have any buffering capabilities. Why didn't we go to Seachem for a shrimp sponsor for the contest? Totally yeah. spaced on that right. one. When you do your 20% RO water change, do you add anything to it? So I don't do a 20% RO water change. I do a 20% water change using RO waters that had been mixed the night before with minerals. So anything that goes into the tank is exactly the same water, just cleaner. It's fresh, brand new water. Um, there might be some mineral loss that, that is in the tank water that you're replenishing. It's not going to show up on a GH or KH to test kit. So... Brenton said, do you have a complete list of the shrimp varieties? Uh, no, I was just talking with Lucas and Dean about that. Uh, I think the last time I made a list were like 130 varieties. I've definitely added quite a few different types um, since then. So uh, we're over 140 and it's time to update the list. I just got to find time where I can crack open the computer and uh, add it all in. I usually oh. save that for a rainy day. I think Lee's it's already gone. Drought. Happy birthday, Lee, if you do rewatch this. Um, sorry we missed it. It was yesterday. He was born at midnight between 13 and 14. So, oh. happy birthday. We had a time change. It's still your, your, your he, birthday. He says there. he does celebrate them both days. So, it All makes right. sense. <laughs> do you like ACCR from Fritz? I don't know what that is. I haven't tried it. Probably not. A lot of things we have not tried. We don't try to add anything. If it's uh, not different. broken, why fix it? Do, 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 do. So I don't like to mess around or try new things. Uh, we've experimented in the past and it kind of hurts or reduces breeding. Uh, and I just don't have any free empty tanks that I can be messing around with that right now because Shelby's got fish in all of them. And Cora said, if the Wi Fi is bad, just record it, Grant. Hmm. Can you recommend a good budget RO system? Um, on eBay, there's five stage RO systems. You don't really need to worry about what, which one you buy. Um, all of them are going to be just about decent if you get five stages or more. Um, there used to be one for around 50 bucks. Uh, if you test your RO water with a TDS pen and your total dissolved solids, are less than 90, you can get away with an RO buddy. It's a three stage unit and it's a lot cheaper. It's, I think it is the $50 option. 
I think there used to be a five stage that was around 50 bucks. I don't know if it's still available or not, but generally speaking, any five stage uh, filter is going to get the job done. Uh, just the filters that come with it are probably going to be really cheap. And all you got to do is just replace those with good filters and you, not cheap ones. And you've got just as good as an RO unit as anybody else. Uh, the BRS is like the best RO unit on the market uh, to most people. But a lot of that is just because the customization options. You can get a booster pump. You can get the TDS gauge. You can get a lot of different things added on to uh, your specific custom RO units. And they just make it easy more than anything. WB says pollen substrate question mark. I don't know about that. Probably one. foul up foul up the I water. I think that would foul up the water quite quickly. Scuba said, what are the best places to eat at Morgantown? We only ate at one place and I didn't really care for it, so we're gonna move on. Like the one like besides fast food. I don't remember eating at any Mexican good. restaurant. It was good. One Mexican restaurant. We went to a Mexican restaurant and everybody was there except for Lefty. And I was really pissed off at Chattanooga. Morgantown. Pennsylvania. We did not yeah. go with any YouTubers. Yeah, that was Morgantown. the Keystone Clash. And was it? Yeah, and Chattanooga Ed planned out lunch. Oh. And Lefty didn't go because oh, he didn't like it. Mexican food. Yeah. That, it was a good Sorry. Mexican restaurant. And I'm not mad at, at Chattanooga Ed. I'm just giving him crap. <laughs> Nano Aquarium Guest says, yeah, um, he said that the Aquion substrate, the sand, the pH went up, so we're going to have to get some of that and test it and see what that's about. I think see. I've seen the Aquion sand, and I just know it wasn't ever going to buffer the substrate, so I never tried it. Now that you mentioned it's a sand, mm -hmm. I do believe I've seen it in the shrimp section. It's meant for neos. Yeah. I don't think it buffers. Chiller Method said, how much of a 25-pound bag of substrate do you use in your 10-gallon setups? So a 25-pound bag will get me four tanks where I'm happy with it. Um, I don't do any like planted uh, uh, rooted plants or anything like that. So that gets me about uh, a little bit over an inch over the black. Um, but, you know, it, it just depends on how thick you like it. Some people like they're all thin and you can get five tanks out of it. No problem. Um, but I, I like getting four tanks per 23 pound bag. I think we caught up on all questions. All so right. we're going to head off to bed and uh, enjoy Jaden's birthday tomorrow. Awesome. So Ruben did come in. I don't know if he's still here. Uh, he did ask if we were going to ship out shrimp. Clearly not. We'll send him out Wednesday. Right? Do I owe Ruben shrimp? I don't know. Figured that out. So I message Ruben <laughs> when right. our phones charge. But thank you, everyone who donated and joined us today thank you jeff kane again for gifting all those people those memberships i believe everyone's super happy to see that and love everyone in the fish fam you know supporting and having fun and um we'll see you next week guys yeah. thanks for watching thanks for the support <laughs> she said it best thank you <laughs> see you guys oh thank you tell Jaden he said happy birthday too. will do <laughs>